It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Korach, He Fell on His Face. Five different occasions in three different parshiot, Moshe and sometimes Aaron, fall on their faces. And the question is, what does that mean? Uh, my yeshiva, I very much appreciate and love my yeshiva, the yeshiva Har Tzion, the Gush Tzion, has put a number of publications, both in print and in videos, in which they have said that falling on your face represents giving up. And that Moshe and Aaron, their time is up as we reach the Parshat Shlach, Korach, and eventually even Parshat Balak, because they can't seem to act. When there's a crisis, they fall on their face. I would like to show that actually the falling of the face can be interpreted in many other ways, and I have one particular way I'd like to suggest. Let's take a look. Firstly, Parsha Shlach, last week's Parsha, the people say that uh, we have to go back to Egypt. It's terrible. We're going to die in, in, in Canaan. It's, it's terrible. The people are giants. Moshe and Aaron fall on their faces. They fell on their face. They fell on their face in front of everybody. In front of the entire congregation. At that point, Yoshua and Kalev take action. They rip their clothes. It's a sign of mourning. They say, that the land is very good. You shouldn't worry about it. You should, out of the love of Israel, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll conquer Israel somehow. The Ibn Ezra says, well, he fell on his face out of his own free will, not out of a sense of prophecy. Ibn Ezra might agree with the, the rabbis of the Gush that he fell on his face, he fell, How, uh, telling us it's not a prophecy. However, he's implying, and he's going to say that elsewhere, that some people interpret that it was a prophecy. When you fall on your face, it can be a prophecy. We'll get back to that. Ramban says, he wasn't just falling on his face like, oh, what am I going to do? Rather, out of resignation, rather, he says it was like he's beseeching them. You fall on your face in front of you, prostrate yourself in, face of, in front of someone, saying, Please, my brethren, don't be so bad. Don't do such terrible things. The, uh, when the when brothers were trying to beg Joseph for mercy for their lives, they thought he was going to kill them. It wasn't true, but we don't think it's true. But um, Yosef certainly was very insulted. They fell in front of him as if to say, we're your slaves, we, get, we give up to you. Um, they are beseeching Joseph. He's beseeching all of the Israel, please don't do such a terrible thing. Also, I would like to, uh, I, uh, however, this Sephorno uh, does agree with the Gush approach. He says, Koshu b'nei makaka, klomar lo yadu malasos. They, it's, it's like the expression in the Talmud that they, they buried their head in the sand. They didn't know what to do. Sforno agrees that this is, they just don't know what to do. Moshe and Aaron became dysfunctional. They were just overwhelmed by this. I would like to suggest that because at the beginning of Bamidbar, Moshe was told that there would be elders, there would be leaders, there would be tribal princes, Nisiim, Ish Ish Lamata, each one person for every tribe, who would be helping them, when they fall on their face, they're hoping that there'll be somebody who will emerge. So you say, Figgles, where did you get that from? You, you fall on your face hoping someone's going to emerge? Yes. That's what happened right here. Yoshua and Kalev stood up because they're leaders. The CA And uh, 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 says, Kol nasi bahem. they are all leaders. And Yoshua and Kalev stood up and they did something. They ripped their clothes as a public sign of mourning. They told everybody, what do you mean? It's, it's a great land. So he was waiting. Moshe and I were waiting for a new generation of leadership to rise up, for helpers to come and help them because you can't face the crowd by yourself. It can't be one man or two men against 600,000 people, millions of people. No. So Moshe waits, and sure enough, leadership emerges. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Yeshua and Caliph could not stop the crowd, but leadership does emerge. Now we turn to our Parsha, Parsha's Korach. When Moshe hears that they were rebelling against him, they're questioning his whole leadership, he falls on his face. Why doesn't Aaron fall on his face? Ramban says, he didn't want to get involved if they're questioning whether I should be the high priest. 
I don't want to get involved. I, I have nothing to say about this. God did it. So he doesn't get involved. But Moshe falls on his face. What does it mean? Rabbi Yagon says something that perhaps Ibn Ezra was alluding to before. He says he was looking for a prophecy. So what do I do now? He falls on his face to get a prophecy. We'll see later where he got that from. Rashbam says he's trying to pray. That's how we pray. We put our, our heads down and we, we pray. He was hoping that when he falls on his face, he would get the inspiration of what to say. He stands up and he does something. This is not a resignation where he doesn't know what to do. You can't say the interpretation of Sforno over here because he does know what to do. When he gets up, he says, Hey, Korah, listen, what I gave you is not bad over here. You've got a good deal. You're a levy. So he, he, he was looking for inspiration. The, the Ibn Ezra says either he fell on his face because he felt like it, or it's not clear what he means, or he gives a second interpretation. It was prophecy. And he quotes from Yechezkel, because in Yechezkel, he saw something and he falls on his face. Saying a prophecy is very overwhelming, so you sometimes fall on your face because it's so overwhelming, you're overwhelmed by the burden of prophecy. Chizkuni perhaps agrees with the Gush approach. He says, yeah, we, he was embarrassed. He buried his head in the sand. For prayer. Well, was he, did he bury his head in the sand or was it for prayer? So some say it's a mistaken text. Chizkuni is giving two interpretations. Either he buried his head in the sand, like the Sforno, or he was actually praying, in which case Sforno, uh, the Chizkuni is taking a more active approach, saying that, that Moshe was doing something. He wasn't just falling on his face. He was praying. Is praying bad? Praying is good. Rashi says, well, he had to fall on his face. This is the fourth time the Jews have sinned, the golden calf, this... The, the spies, this is the, he can't take it anymore. And uh, all the debate, he, he, was, he was just broken by, he was devastated. What are you supposed to do when the people have, have not the third strike, but the fourth strike? Later on in the Parsha, Korach three times, he falls on his face. Later on in the Parsha, the people audaciously say, you've killed the people of God. You've built, killed the people of God? Moshe is not in the business of killing anybody. He's trying to take them to Israel. So he falls on his face again. They fell on they fell on their faces and they said, Is only one person gonna sin and everyone is going to uh to die? So um and um So Hashem says, all right, fine, uh, only, the, only, only Korach will die. Later on in the parsha, the people complain again. So he says, hey, Romu, uh, God says, look, I'm going to destroy everybody. So they fall on their faces. God's going to destroy everybody. What are we going to do? So Moshe, so they fall on their faces. But then Moshe turns to Aaron and he says, use the fire pans, use the incense. Go out with the incense and we'll, we'll cure this problem. So it's true that Moshe falls on his face, but in the first case, he said he pre makes a prayer that one man sins and everyone's going to die. It's not fair. In the second case, again, this is the second and third case in in this parsha. Um, he wakes up after his falls on his face to perhaps get inspiration to get to find out what to do. The Rashbam find out what he should pray. Um, when he gets up, he has an action plan. He says, uh, Aaron, go out and bring that incense and atone for all the people, otherwise everyone will die. Finally, there's a story in Parshas Balak, two Parshas away. In Balak, Hema Bochim. What happened? There was a terrible act of immorality. Everyone started getting into it, the daughters of Midian and the Jewish boys, and there was a lot of licentiousness, and then a public act of licentiousness by Zimri with this uh, with this other with this woman who was a Midianite, so everyone started to cry. It's such a terrible thing. God is a sonezima. God doesn't like these type of licentious activities. So they're crying. So again, you could say they didn't fall on his face, but they're, they're crying. All, all all Moses and Aaron can muster up is to cry. So uh, so Rashi again takes the sort of they gave up approach and says he didn't know what Allah was. Ibn Ezra sticks with his guns. He said, no, they were, they were praying. So uh, they were crying and they were praying. However, once again, I would like to suggest that they, they're crying 
because they're hoping that someone will stand up. They can't stand up against the crowd on their own. Two people cannot stand up against everyone. They were told and promised at the beginning of Bamidbar, you will have helpers. They're, they fall in there, they're crying and saying, God, who's the helper? And sure enough, what happens? Pinchas emerges. Earlier in the first parasha that we talked about, Shalach, they fall on their face, and what happens? Yoshua and Kalev emerge, and they try to help Moshe out. It didn't work. Over here, Moshe cries, and Pinchas arises, and in fact, Pinchas saves the day, and he ushers in a whole new era of activism on behalf of the new generation. And from now on, Moshe will never be alone. Whatever he does, he'll always have the Nasim, the leaders, with him. So, in summary, I'd like to suggest that when Moshe falls on his face, he's not giving up, he's not, uh, he's, not, he's not abdicate his role as leader. Rather, he's waiting for, the, for God's promise of other leadership to emerge. And in fact, in Shlach and in Pinchas, when he waits, something happens. In Shlach, two people arose. In Pinchas, perp- the, in the end of Balak, the perfect person arose, Pinchas, and he saved the day. Uh, when, when Pinchas arose, everything was saved. It's not a failure. At worst, it's a prayer. No reason to assume it's, they're just falling on their face because they've given up. It's a possibility. It's an, it's a, it is a possible interpretation. But it's just as likely as it's a prayer. And we, we, as religious Jews, can't say that if the leaders fall on their face to pray in front of everybody, that that's a failure. The Gemara talks about it, that maybe you should. If you're a great leader, you know that you'll be answered. You should fall on your face in front of the entire congregation to show, more than to show that uh, you, you, uh, you're praying very intensely and you hope to be answered. And that's not a, a kishalon. It's not some sort of failure. That is, that is what a leader should do. He should be praying. And also we have to recognize that ain't navi b'loam. He can't lead alone. You can't expect Moshe that he's going to stand up against all these terrible rebellions. It can't be done. Look what happened to Aaron when he stood up, stood up to the golden calf. Uh, Hur was killed. But uh, rather, Moshe is both praying, he's also waiting for new leadership to emerge. That's the story here. We, when we have face problems in our own lives, we should pray, and we should pray for leadership to emerge to save us from all of our problems. Mirza Hashem, one day, Mashiach Tzikinu, the, the great leader, will arise and he will save us, and we will be saved. Thank you for joining us here at Baron Hirsch Congregation for a discussion of the Parsha and the Holidays. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thanks to Andy and Trisha Woodman, our sponsors. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein.